Hey there, my name is Jaden, here for Foam Armory, and today we're going to be making three different half masks. Check it out. Our first mask today was unfolded in Pepicura on our Tuesday live streams. It's a five-piece Sub-Zero mask from Mortal Kombat that we'll be cutting out of 6mm foam. The patterns are traced out in Sharpie and then carefully cut out with an X-Acto blade, being sure to angle the cuts around the cheek recesses for an angled fit. The grooves in the grill of the mouth were carefully cut and pressed in to give the layered look, and an undercut was made in both side panels for a subtle line across the cheekbones. After a little bit of cleanup, I dove headfirst into patterning out our second tier mask from the new Dune movie. We're moving up in complexity with this mask, so we'll be hand drafting these patterns. I took my head form and covered it in a couple layers of aluminum foil, and then I busted out the masking tape to cover the foil. The tape gives us a nice solid layer to draft the rough shapes of the mask directly onto the dummy and sharpie. Then we can easily cut apart the templates and lay them out flat. These pieces are traced onto some printer paper. I opted to mirror the chin piece and leave the upper face of the dune mask two pieces that join at the center line. After the basic shapes were traced out, I went about drafting the details of the mask using as many reference images as I could get my hands on. These templates will be cut apart later to transfer the detail lines to the mask pieces. I also took the time to cut a pattern piece for a strip of 2mm foam to use as the center line detail of the mask. This piece has the added benefit of hiding the center seam of the build. Our third build is far and away the most complex of our half masks. It's Sakai's Ghost Mask from Ghost of Tsushima, essentially a modified Mempo mask from the game. I thought about modifying my Fade Mask templates for this build, but I ultimately wound up going for the same foil and tape method. However, this time I made sure to work the foil into the crevices of the face to achieve a more detailed nose and cheek pattern. This mask also extends further back on the face, so I had to be sure to cover more of my dummy and masking tape. Needless to say, it took me a couple of tries to get the right shape onto the tape, and I wound up redrawing my work a few times before settling on the final shape. There's a lot of detail to capture in this mask, and I wanted to incorporate as much of it as possible into a functional prop piece. After removing any additional foil, the mask is easily cut apart with a sharp set of scissors and traced onto some more printer paper. Drafting onto printer paper has the added bonus of ensuring that all of these pieces can fit onto a letter sheet when I go to digitize these pieces later. Similar to the Dune mask, I set about adding the detail lines to my patterns, including both undercuts and raised areas that will need to be layered in 2mm craft foam. If you find yourself redrawing your work as you go through this process, don't worry. Now is the time to head off any errors in the overall form of your patterns, so don't be afraid to make any necessary changes. After cutting out the finalized patterns, it's good to pause to take stock of all your pieces before making the jump to foam. Just like the Sub-Zero mask, both of these masks will be based in 6mm foam. I organized my pattern pieces by mask on the material, flipping over patterns for the right-left symmetry. For my hand-drafted pieces, I made the call to trace in gray sharpie in case I wanted or even needed to trace over my work in a darker color to make corrections. The build is fairly simple, but we're going to be adding more fine detail by carving out the details of the face. We can cut out the four circles on the face at this point using a fresh, sharp blade to ensure our lines are good and clean. After removing the offcuts, I stacked together a series of foam half dowels to fill the holes. The dowel was cut to size, and I tacked the pieces together into a single sheet with super glue. When working in foam, I prefer gel control Loctite. It has a short working time, but it doesn't instantly sink into the foam. The face pieces were then used as a guide to trace and cut the inserts from the dowels. Before setting the dune mask aside, 
I dry fit the pieces together. Happy with the fit, I pulled some black 2mm foam to cut the center strip as well as the bands that lay across the dowels. Cutting out 2mm foam requires a bit more care so as not to stretch the foam unduly. With everything cut out, the dune mask was set aside along with the Sub-Zero mask to make way for the Ghost of Tsushima half mask. These pieces were meticulously cut out with particular attention paid to some of the more nuanced, organic shapes. Certain edges were beveled for fit and detail lines were marked on the faces to be added after assembly. Similar to the dune mask, there are six pieces that need to be cut from 2mm foam to add subtle depth to the nose and cheeks. At this point, it's prudent to add registration marks for the nostril, as well as the placement for those 2mm details. When you're done gluing everything together, you'll be left with three raw sculpts like this. I went ahead and ground in the subtle edge of the cheekbones before drafting the teeth by hand to fit the fully assembled mask. All it took was a piece of paper folded in half to create a single, symmetrical master for the toothers. Them toothers were then traced onto 6mm foam and beveled or rounded to achieve their final shape. I attempted to assemble the teeth with hot glue initially, but it was a bit too messy for my liking, so I opted to tack them down with super glue and then reinforce that bond with hot glue on the interior. With the toothers in place, I took my rotary tool and drill bit and ground out the many holes in the mask. These add a lot of surface variation and tie everything together. The detail lines in the cheeks were etched in as well and popped open with my heat gun. I've included affiliate links to all of my tools and materials down below in the description. They're an easy way to follow along with me and help out the channel. As a final layer of detail, I cut down some wooden barbecue skewers and hot glued them into the ghost mask. Pilot holes were hand drilled for each of these pieces, two shorter ones for the cheek, and a single piece about three quarters of an inch in length for the chin. This chin piece was further shaped with a little bit of foam clay. The clay gives the piece a uniform look with the mask and the dowel makes it good and strong. Jumping all the way back to our Sub-Zero mask, I cut down two metal thumbtacks to sit in the recesses of the cheeks. These were simply trimmed with a set of needle nose pliers and hot glued into place. At long last, we're finally ready for sealing. I applied a couple thin down coats of Mod Podge inside and outside of all three builds. Once dry, I did a round of filling with some white quick seal caulk. All it takes to smooth out these edges is a little water in your finger. Don't be afraid to spend a good deal of time at this stage. Any edges you can cover up at this stage will be 10 times as difficult to cover with paint later on, so be thorough and do your best to hit all the problem areas. When all that caulk is dried, it's time to apply two to three layers of plastic dip followed by base coats. Gloss enamel blue for Sub-Zero and matte black for Dune and Ghost. The matte will be a good base for the metallics and dull coats, whereas the gloss blue will give us that superhero quality of Mortal Kombat costuming. Each of these masks will be finished primarily in acrylics. The Sub-Zero mask had a layer of black acrylic applied with a wet brush to the grill and the cheeks. A wet brush helps us minimize brush strokes, as does a soft brush. With great care and a steady hand, you won't even need to tape off for this step. Next up, the dune mask is technically just a solid matte color, but I wanted to pop all that detail we put together. So I mixed up a dull acrylic gray and wiped most of the excess off my brush onto a paper towel to dry brush the piece. This leaves a nice weathered edge highlight and helps everybody see all the work we put into those cheek inserts. The ghost mask needs the most work from base coat to final product. I decided to try out a Plaid FX metallic gunmetal, applying it all over the mask. It covered very well in just two coats. I then went through with some rub and buff wax paints, silver for the Mortal Kombat mask, and teak gold for the ghost mask, teeth, chin, and cheeks. To finish it off, I've watered down some acrylic black paints to give the whole thing a wet, grimy look. With all that, the three masks were finally complete.
So here's one of the masks, all prettied up. As you can see, it fits really nicely onto my cloth face mask. It just Velcros on and off again. Ah. I just attached this one with Velcro, just like this, so it means we can put on any of our other masks as well. This build video was a lot of fun because I think it shows off a lot of different building techniques. Obviously, this is Foam Pepicura. I'm going to be putting a link down in the description for not only Pepicura Designer, but also these templates. So feel free to check that out. I'll also be linking down below to my Etsy store where both of these templates are going to be available. You got the Dune mask as well as this mask from Ghost of Tsushima. I had a ton of fun building these two masks. There's also no limit to how far you can take these. The depth of the detail here and here is incredible. The templates for these are gonna be on sale on my Etsy store for just three bucks. It's an easy way to help support the channel. Not to mention these templates look super great. I love the way these look. Honestly, there's the small mask, and then if you wanna be super extra, you got this guy as well. So now to wrap up, I'd like to do some winners and losers here. Big winners are gonna be enamel blue paint. This looks crazy, it looks great. It looks like one solid resin piece and it's foam, so. There you go. Big winner, plaid gunmetal metallic. I can't speak for the rest of the plaid FX paints, but their gunmetal metallic looks gorgeous in person and it dries super quick. Big winner, foam half dowels. These things were super easy to use and with super glue, I was able to put them all in place. They add a ton of depth to this. I don't know how close I can get this to, to focus. Oh yeah, that looks really cool. And with the dry brush, it really pops out. You know, these days there's so much to be nervous about, so much to be anxious about. The world is on fire, but there's never been a better time as a crafter to have a little fun and show off what you make. So I really hope to see some of you folks make these builds. And if you do, you should send pictures to me. I love seeing people put together these builds and I love being a part of the community. I want to give a quick shout out to our patrons, Austin of AJ Plays Piano and Kieran. Thank you guys so much. For just three bucks a month, you too can get your name in these videos. And we would love to have your name in these videos. Uh, before I go, I just want to give a little teaser for our next build. We're going to be running all the way back to Fortnite, and we've got a Daredevil mask. So I cannot wait to show you guys this. It's going to be a lot of fun. But for now, I've been Jaden. Thank you folks so much for watching. Take care.